has several, several interpretations. All right, I got you back now. Of one scripture. So mm -hmm. are we back on now? Yeah, you're on now. Uh, we kind of had a blip, um, unfortunately, and so there was a... Um, uh, issue with my you camera. You missed some really good you stuff. You missed some really good stuff. <laughs> I mean, it was really, really hairy good you missed, stuff. You missed the money <laughs> by the <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So anyway, now that we're back and on. we can't recapture it. <laughs> now that we're back on, we'll go back to the same <laughs> and Louisa. Um, but Very we had time. gotten off a little bit, but I want to, I was want to go back to the fact that we talked about that John was the, the, the apostle of love and he walked in such divine love they couldn't even kill him and so he just lived out his full life because he had such a love attitude and I want to read to you because as I was praying about this and about John and about being a gospel of I mean apostle of love the Lord said you know love is the glue mm -hmm. that really puts everything together and um, in in First Peter, I think it was we were or Second Peter, we were studying the other night when when uh, the sweet lady was ministering that you know she was reading about the different steps you know you mm -hmm. go and the very pinnacle of that was the agape kind of love, yes. and the agape kind of love can only be achieved by a believer. A, a non-believer cannot cannot walk in that kind of divine love. But that is the highest thing that we can uh, try to um, achieve. And I want to read you this because it just kind of nails us where we are. And in 1 Corinthians 13, love endures long and is patient and kind. And love never is envious nor bulls over with jealousy. This is the amplified version. Uh, it is not boastful or vainglorious. It does not display itself haughtily. It is not conceited, arrogant, and inflated with pride. It is not rude, and it does not act unbecomingly. Uh, God's love does not insist on its own rights or its own way, for it's not self-seeking, and it's not touchy or fretful or resentful. It takes no account of the evil done to it. It doesn't pay it, it back. It does not rejoice at injustice and unrighteousness, but rejoices when right and truth prevail. Love bears up under everything. And one of the things it says down here in another um, <laughs> translation is that love does not rejoice in finding satisfaction in the shortcomings of others. <laughs> I love that. And love knows how to deal with difficult people. Mm -hmm. Help us, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I love that because there's so many people that have to work with difficult people. And, you know, what they want to do is change a job. God's not liking you to change a job. He's just saying you've got to find out how to work with these what people. What I understand is that it is agape. It's the God kind of love. God puts that love. God has to put that love in our heart. He says in Romans 5 <clears throat> that he puts it in our heart. He says, tribulation works patience. Patience endurance. Endurance makes not a shame because the love of God is shed, gushes out of our heart through Christ Jesus. So, it has to come from God. Mm -hmm. I can't work it up. Mm -hmm. And if I read and I say, oh, oh, I've got to do all these things. All you've done is tried to make a legal system out of something that the Lord is simply saying, here's what I want you to realize. You can't do it on your own. Mm -mm. You can't love this way mm -mm. out of yourself. It has to come from Him. But you know, I think the reason a lot of people, they want to talk about faith, See me? Because it's like, you know, I can get, give me, get me, give me. They want to talk about faith, and I'm, I'm a faith teacher, so I'm not opposed to talking about faith. But, on the other hand, a lot of people, we want to talk about the love wall. And the reason we want to talk about the love wall, because that really crucifies the flesh. If anything rips the flesh wide open, it's to learn how to embrace 
the love walk. And you know, not being offended, God told me one time, he says, Louis, you don't have a right to be offended. And I thought, well, I do have a right to be offended. They were nasty. And what if they lied about you? And they lied about me. And he said, mm -mm. I will defend you, but I don't want you to get out of the spirit. I don't want you to get into the flesh. I don't want you to walk out of the spirit and into the flesh. And you know, uh, Larry went into the jail one night and the men were acting terrible and they were they were very rude and he came out and he was really disrupted. And I said, let me tell you what you need to do the next time. Go in and if they're acting that way, sit down at the table and start reading your Bible. But I said, do not react. Mm -hmm. Okay? Just don't react because that's where we get into trouble, Sammy. Is we want to react and and by not reacting, evil cannot be perpetuated. What we part of the thing that has helped me is the scriptures tell us that the Lord Jesus Christ becomes our example of suffering. Mm -hmm. And that he, when he was reviled, he didn't revile mm -hmm. again. He didn't mm -hmm. do all of those things. And, it's, and it says then that the reproaches that fall on us, actually Jesus stands as the shield and he takes them. Mm -hmm. He takes those reproaches personally. Mm -hmm. And for me, it not only helps me to understand that anything that's directed toward me, he's going to receive as his, mm -hmm. but then also it helps me to control what's coming out of me because whatever I might want to direct at somebody else, the Lord Jesus is going to take that. So I, it's a, it's a, a two-way deal. Not only does he receive my reproaches, but if I reproach someone he's, he's else, gonna he's got, he's, it's, it's going to fall on him. Mm -hmm. And how dare I do that? Well, it's going to fall on you too. Yeah. Because, <laughs> you know, you're going to reap what you sow. And I think there's a sowing and reaping um, that runs all through the Word of God. And we need oh, to Oh, it's the basic law from beginning to end. Right. And so we Seed, need time to realize, and harvest. Yeah. So what are, what are you <clears throat> sowing? And then you turn around and have a pity party because suddenly you reaped a lot of the things that you've sown. And so we, we have to take some personal responsibility. But I just want, one lady wrote to me one time when I taught on this love, and it was just, she was like, I am so frustrated. I know what you're telling me is true, blah, blah, blah. But you just don't know, and I don't know how to do this. And it's exactly what you just said because it's not, you can't do this. Absolutely not. You cannot. <laughs> okay? You can't do it. But I think if you will continue to read chapter uh, 1 Corinthians 13 and get that so in your heart that the first reaction you'll have is what love says. And let that be your reaction. But it's, it is, it's a changing. It's a real changing. It's a metamorphosis. It takes time. And you, you do have to know, according to Scripture, what love is so that you can recognize what love isn't. Yeah. That's true. You know, you don't have to go to a bar to understand what an alcoholic's going through. No. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> you, you, you don't have to walk in the mud in order to feel what a pig feels. Um, I think we need to... Don't even take drugs to know what a drug yeah, is. Yeah, we need to realize that, um, you know, we relate to others according to how the Word relates. You know, Jesus was surrounded by sinners all the time. Matter of fact, that was his crew. They, you know, he had dinner with them. And the religious people were like, how can you? Hmm. And I'm thinking, some people say, well, how can you go into the jail? And I thought, they're some of the sweetest people you ever want to meet in the jail. <laughs> because they're not religious. They're not self-centered. They're not puffed up. You know what I mean? They they know who they are. 
they're 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 and and I and I don't know. It just really um, once you begin to separate yourself from the things of this world, Sammy, um, they grow really dim, really dim. Okay. So. Uh, we want to leave it with that. My husband's telling us to wind this up, but I hope you join us next week. We'll come again with you with some good messages from the Word of God, and we enjoy having you join us. And write us if you have some questions. We'll try to answer them. Love you. Bye-bye.